Time to explore hydrogen technologies. This is a collaboration series with Aspen Tech. For more information, stay tuned until the end of this video. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you recall, in the last video, we were talking about the importance of hydrogen, hydrogen technologies and the hydrogen economy. But more importantly, why is this important as a process or chemical engineer? And of course, one of the most important parts of the hydrogen economy is knowing what are the relevant trends and technologies that hydrogen is taking over. Hence, this is what we're going to cover in this video. So let's get started. Recall guys that when you're talking about any type of industry, but more importantly, hydrogen industry, we have four main challenges. We're talking about number one, production, number two, storage, number three, distribution, and number four, utilization. These are, of course, the hydrogen technology fundamentals, but also each one of them will have its challenges. In this specific video, we're going to be focusing our attention into hydrogen production technologies. So I'm going to be making a very broad overview on the other three aspects, storage, distribution, and utilization. So let's assume that hydrogen has been produced or we have obtained it. The very first natural thing that you will want to do is to store it. There are many ways in which hydrogen can be stored. Since hydrogen has been there in the industry, we already know the most common types of storage technologies. I'm talking about compressed hydrogen gas, which as the name implies, is the pressurization and decrease in volume of the hydrogen gas. Number two will be the liquefaction of hydrogen gas into liquid hydrogen. As you can imagine, this is quite expensive. And new technologies have been explored. I'm talking about the metal hydrides, which are essentially metals that can, I'm quoting here, absorb hydrogen and increase the storage density for such compound. Of course, there's a lot of new technologies coming on, but the most common ones are the very first two, most commonly the compressed gas. And as challenges, you can see that definitely the decrease in the total volume of hydrogen will have a huge impact. Not only that, guys, we already know that the liquefaction of any gas, specifically the smallest gas out there, hydrogen gas, will of course require a lot of heat duty for the cooling. Not only that, it's also a safety issue and a very costly operation. Hence the importance in improving the technologies for hydrogen storage. Afterwards, the topic on hydrogen distribution is one of concern. Why? Because we already know that we can produce hydrogen we can store it, but eventually, if you want to achieve the mass market consumption, you need to have a really great distribution system. And unfortunately, there is a lack of infrastructure throughout all the systems. I'm talking about industrial level, I'm talking about transportation level, and I'm talking about domestic level. One of the most important aspects is to know that most of the hydrogen gas will be transported either via a pipeline or most likely via tankers. Of course, this may be convenient for industrial use, but definitely not for domestic use. And this is very important because if we really want to make the shift towards the hydrogen economy, the hydrogen distribution system gotta be at its finest. And finally, guys, once that you have produced your hydrogen, stored it and distributed it, eventually what you want to do is to use your hydrogen. As an individual, it is way much likely that you will end up using hydrogen fuel in your electrical vehicle. Hence the importance of having a great utilization system. Not only that, at the industrial level, we gotta have great fuel cell industries that will have the greatest efficiency when we're talking about the combustion of hydrogen gas into electricity that will end up in the electrical grid of your house. Of course, one of the top concerns are those exactly. Which type of equipments, which type of fuel cells, and which type of devices are going to be favored in order to use the hydrogen as a fuel. So now that we have covered those three aspects, let's focus our attention into hydrogen production technologies. And remember that we're going to be focusing our attention into the three top hydrogen sources, which is gray hydrogen, blue hydrogen, and green hydrogen. If you need some help with the color codes, please check out this video right here. But very quickly, gray hydrogen stands for the hydrogen that is obtained via fossil fuels. Blue hydrogen is all of that hydrogen that has been obtained just via fossil fuels, but that we have been using carbon capture technologies. Let it be, CO2 is not going off to the atmosphere. And finally, green hydrogen, which as the name implies, comes from green fuels. Let it be solar energy, wind energy, biomass, 
and so forth. Now, of course, we're going to cover the three most common ones that you will encounter in the industry. And I'm talking about number one is steam reforming, which is essentially converting natural gas and steam into hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide. As you can see, this is very CO2 intensive, but very easy to obtain industrially. Number two will be the partial oxidation of hydrocarbons. In this specific case, we're going to be using hydrocarbons and oxygen at very high temperatures. What's going to happen is the oxidation of these hydrocarbons into carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. Of course, later on, hydrogen gas is going to be separated and carbon monoxide is going to be converted into carbon dioxide which later on is going to be either free to the atmosphere or stored underground. And last but not least, we're talking about the electrolysis of water, which as the name implies, is going to be using electrolysis to separate water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. The important aspect right here is that it requires a lot of energy in the form of electricity. Now, the main advantage of this from all other is that number one, the raw material or feedstock is water, and number two, there is no carbon dioxide production. Yet, the drawback is that you require electricity, which nowadays is obtained mostly via fossil fuels. But there is a glance of hope because we are making the transition from fossil fuels into renewable energies. Hence, if we can obtain that electricity from a green source or a renewable energy, this will be great news for the industry. Now you understand why electrolysis of water seems to be a very great technology for hydrogen fuel production. I want to show you this little diagram, guys. Essentially, this is what we have been covering throughout this series, guys. So first things first, we're going to have an energy supply, meaning that we got to ensure that our energy comes from a renewable source, either solar energy, wind energy, it can be biomass energy or whatever type of energy that is renewable. Or if you're going to be obtaining these via fossil fuels, remember that you're going to use carbon sequestration technologies, carbon capture and so on. Whatever source you may have, the important aspect is that the electric grid or the electricity is going to be the main input for the electrolyzer. And remember guys that there's a lot of electrolyzer models and eventually what you're going to be doing is working with the electricity that comes from the electric grid and work with the production of hydrogen gas, which is the main focus of this video. Remember that we have many models or many type of electrolyzers. We have the proton exchange membrane method, we have the anion exchange method or the alkaline method. And once the hydrogen is produced, we are going to either store it, let it be a compressed form or a liquefied form, or we're going to be distributing the hydrogen gas via pipelines, via trucks, via containers, and finally, the utilization guys, which is the hydrogen fuel car, or if we're talking about the industry or maybe commercial use, we're going to be using hydrogen cell fuels. Now let's go to the basics of electrolysis of water. I'm pretty sure that you are quite familiar with it. It's essentially working with water. We have the anode, the cathode, we add energy, and we know that with energy, we can always reverse processes such as the chemical bonds in water and convert them into hydrogen and oxygen gas. And now the main types of electrolysis of water are these ones right here. Of course, you can find a lot of other processes, but these are the most common ones, the ones that you're going to encounter in the industrial applications. So let us check out the alkaline electrolysis of water. So the main electrolyte is going to be alkaline electrolyte solution. Typically, it's going to be potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. It is in a basic medium above seven high pH levels. Typical applications are large scale hydrogen production due to its efficiency and established technology. This is one of the most common type of technologies that you're going to encounter out there. Then we have the AEM, which is the anion exchange membrane electrolysis. The main idea, as you can imagine, is adding a membrane for the anion. So that's the main difference. You're going to be adding this uh, membrane to separate the hydrogen and oxygen evolution reactions. Electrolytes gonna be basic at moderate pH levels between seven and eight. And the main advantages are that they are pretty efficient. If you add a membrane, for sure you're going to be separating the ions way better and more efficiently. And finally, guys, we got the proton exchange membrane. This is pretty common, as you can imagine. This will have a membrane 
but will be working with the protons or the hydrogen ions. The electrolyte is typically a acid, so it must be in acidic medium. It could be sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid. The main advantages is that it is pretty efficient. It is suitable for small scale operations, but it's also very convenient for industrial applications. So there you have it guys. Now you know more about the electrolysis of water to convert it into hydrogen gas. But more importantly, you now understand the actual trends that are taking hydrogen technologies. Now, remember that in this video series, guys, we want to focus our attention into the process simulation at the industrial scale. And before we go, guys, please let us know in the comment section which other type of hydrogen technologies do you want to explore? But more importantly, what are your doubts regarding hydrogen production and hydrogen technology simulation? And as stated before, we're going to be using Aspen Tech software, specifically the electrolyzer model. So ensure to check out the next video. On my behalf, that will be it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.